So that's the alpha particle, and that's alpha emission. Now let's take a look at uh, what was going on in the 1930s where scientists were trying to understand the next type of emission from the nucleus, which is called beta emission. So beta emission or beta decay, beta decay. Okay, so they were observing that a different type of particle was ejected from the nucleus for some nuclei. And this particle was a very high speed electron called a beta particle. It's also called a beta minus is the other way of writing it. So it's an electron going very close to the speed of light. And when they looked at the energy profile, just as we did with the, uh, the, uh, the alpha particle, and we looked at how many of these alpha particles had what type of energy, then they also did that with the beta particle, and they found something slightly strange. So here's our graph of energy on this axis versus the number of beta particles that were thrown out from a nucleus and they didn't they didn't see two or three or four discrete energy levels as you would expect they saw something looking like this let's try that again <laughs> in fact let's do a different color so they saw a range of of energies so it's a little range of energies and that baffled a lot of scientists and a lot of people because it seemed to go against the principle of conservation of energy I mean if if you had a process where a, a nuclear decay happened inside here a specific process that gave out a specific amount of energy then why has this beta particle got a, a range of a range of, of energies, of kinetic energies, as it's taken out of the nucleus. Why doesn't it just have two or three, or maybe just one? And, and so in the 1930s, a, a gentleman, a scientist called Wolfgang Pauli, so Wolfgang, Wolfgang Pauli, suggested that there was another particle that was given out in beta emission as well as a beta particle he suggested he suggested that there was a new particle called the neutrino and that the neutrino carried away the balance of energy that the decay gave out so that the total amount of energy was the same so if, for example, if the beta particle came out with, uh, let's say, um, I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Um, let's say the total, the total decay energy equals, uh, these, aren't, aren't, these aren't correct, I'm just picking these out of the air. If it was 10 mega electron volts, then one possibility is that the, the, the beta particle, let's just get rid of this for a moment. Sorry about that. Is that the beta particle? The beta particle got, let's say, maybe six of these mega electron volts of kinetic energy, and the the neutrino, which has got it's like a V, and in this case we're going to put a little e down here because it's associated with an electron, which is what a beta particle is. Come into that in a moment would carry, a, the, carry away the balance of, of the energy, which would be 4 mega electron volts, so that it would equal, in total, 10 mega electron volts. And you could have different, different combinations of this. You could have uh, 7 and 3, etc. So that was postulated by Wolfgang Pauli, uh, Pauli? No, Pauli in uh, 1930. And it wasn't for another... Ooh, 26 years that it was actually observed. So 26 years later, 
it was observed experimentally. Uh, so it's a lovely bit of physics that uh, actually um, hypothesized that, uh, that there was a new particle um, in this decay. So as well as an electron being spat out, a beta particle, we've also got a, an, uh, a neutrino. Here it is, an electron neutrino. And in this particular decay, we're going to give it a little bar on the top, and uh, this signifies that it is an anti-neutrino. And we'll come into antiparticles and antimatter in another video. But uh, for this decay, for beta emission, it's actually an anti-neutrino that is given out. So let's take a look at a, uh, 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 the equation that you'll need to know for beta decay. Or beta negative, beta minus decay. So here we go. Let's choose pink. So what happens in the nucleus in beta decay? We get a neutron. Now, a neutron's got a, a mass number of 1, a nucleon number of 1, and an atomic number of 0. It's not a proton. A neutron says, well, hang on, I don't want to be a neutron anymore. I want to be a proton. So it decays into a proton. Proton has got a, a mass number of 1 and an atomic number of 1. It is a proton. Plus a high-speed electron. Now, the mass number of an electron is put as zero, even though it does have a very small mass, um, and the atomic number is minus one, meaning that it is the opposite charge to a proton. It is a negative charge, plus an anti-neutrino. It's an electron neutrino. An electron neutrino, there are, there are several types of, of neutrino, and this one is associated with electrons, hence it is called an electron neutrino. Um, basically, whenever you have a decay, that, uh, for example, an, an electron beta particle is emitted, and there's a neutrino that's emitted, it's, it's very likely that it will be an electron neutrino, and in this case, it is an anti-neutrino. Okay, now the, there is another uh, equation, there is another decay, which is worth noting. So this is beta, this is beta negative decay, but there is actually one which is the opposite of this. It's called beta positive decay or positron. Positron emission. Positron emission. Now positron is the antiparticle of an electron. Now we'll talk about antiparticles later in another video, but it essentially has the same mass, but it has the opposite charge. And what happens here is that we start off with a proton. And the proton kind of goes, well, I don't want to be a proton anymore. I want to be a neutron. So we decay into a neutron. It's the opposite way around, plus a positron. So it's an electron with zero mass, but with one as its charge, plus one as its charge, not minus one as it was up here. And we also eject a, a neutrino, but it's not an anti-neutrino in this case. It is an, a, a normal particle, a normal piece of matter, a, a, a neutrino, an electron neutrino. And that's beta positive decay or positron emission. It's worth noting. Okay, that's all for now. See you in the next video.